It's dancing. For WCCO, this is Dark Star. Have a nice evening. You are watching WCCO2, a service of CCO Cable. This is how most of us think of history. Black and white images from the past, glimpses of days gone by. But tonight we are experiencing history, coping with a rainfall so severe, a weather service forecaster says it could only happen once in five or 6,000 years. You are watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. The Twin Cities' most watched newscasts. With Pat Miles, Don Shelby, Mike Fairborn has weather, and Mark Rosen with sports. And now, this is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us. Parts of Minnesota tonight have the dubious distinction of being in a state of emergency. Governor Rudy Perpich officially handed down that title today to the area's hardest hit by last night's storms. Now, most of them are in the Twin Cities metropolitan area, and it will take at least two weeks before the federal government decides whether to grant those areas a state of emergency aid. The high winds and heavy rain certainly took their toll in lives and dollars. The Twin Cities, two Twin Cities men died. Both were drowning victims. In Maple Grove alone, damage estimates ranged from four to five million dollars. The rainfall amounts broke several different records. Minneapolis had about 10 inches, Lake Minnetonka 12 inches, and some parts of Edina recorded 14 inches of rain. 70-year-old Harold Burnside of South Minneapolis was one of the men killed in last night's storm. He drowned when his basement wall collapsed, sending rushing water on top of him. Burnside had gone down to get something out of the freezer when the accident happened. Divers first went in last night to search for his body, but the situation was too dangerous. So they went back this morning, pumped out the basement, and found him. I says, oh no, it can't be a tornado on top of everything else. So I went to the basement and started calling Harold, but the water was up. I knew that he couldn't answer. His wife had been rescued last night. Harold Burnside had been an activist who fought for improvement of the city's sewer system. The other victim last night drowned in Hopkins when his car stalled on a flooded road. He got out and was swept away by eight feet deep floodwaters in Nine Mile Creek. If you had to get around in some parts of the cities today, you simply couldn't. Flooded streets and highways brought traffic to a standstill. Some of the worst delays were in the city of Bloomington. We've just been sitting here. It's so boring. It's been hell. <laughs> Pardon? It's been hell. Well, I don't get frustrated anymore. I'm retired. Tonight, the mess goes on. Traffic on 494 is still backed up. The freeway is now open where it had been closed at Penn Avenue. County Road 18 and Moose Lake Road still some trouble. The heavy rains and flooding forced Southdale to close for the day. This is a shot of the flood at its worst, and it was taken early this morning. Cindy Hilzer gives us an update now on how things are going. This is what Southdale looks like tonight. Much of the water's gone. Now the mall is flooded with cleanup crews. Hundreds of store clerks and mall workers spent much of last night and all of today trying to wash away the debris swept in by the storm. The stores on a lower level were hit the worst. At Children's Barbers, water took out the ceiling. The owner took out the chairs to clean the floor. I, I was not prepared. I really was not prepared. John Volpe remembers the last record rainfall back in 1977. It took him no time at all to clean up after that flood. Not so this time. Uh, everybody that works here showed up today and we're all working hard and cleaning and it's going to go. It's the first time ever rain has closed the place. Not even a snowstorm shut Southdale down. There's no word yet on how much merchandise was lost to the flood, nor on how much business was lost after being closed for a day. Cleanup crews will work through the night, clearing the water and debris out of the mall. Southdale hopes to open at 9.30 tomorrow morning, with 85% of the stores ready to do business. Cindy Hildred, WCCO Television News, Edina.
And the damage was not limited to Southdale. It was widespread all over town. One of the hard-hit spots was in Eden Prairie. There, one family's new home is literally on the brink. Much of the ground beneath it was washed away. In Minneapolis, the lot where they tow impounded cars was flooded. 200 vehicles in three feet of water. A new car dealer's lot was flooded in Minnetonka. At least 25 cars were damaged. It was not cars, but boats that were damaged on Lake Minnetonka. At least one was sunk. And the water turned the back nine at Hiawatha Golf Course into one big water hazard. If the general populations of our hometowns was shocked by the deluge, the people of Maple Grove were horrified by the storm. Five million dollars in damage to more than 100 homes. Ten rendered total losses due to the tornado or other high winds that hit the area. This morning, the shock of seeing home and hearth destroyed was subdued by the reality of the cleanup and the rebuilding process. But for people like Dan Rogers, the storm took more than a material toll. I kind of feel a little bit like I did when we had, when we were robbed. Something has destroyed my day-to-day -day life, you know. It's a real feeling of insecurity. The destruction is just awesome, you know. It's just, I keep, I've been walking through here since 6 o'clock going, I don't believe this. The shelters will be rebuilt. The people who lost their homes are thankful they didn't lose more. No serious injuries reported. Tonight, police have sealed the area so that victims can go about the job of putting their lives back together again in an atmosphere of relative privacy. There are still many power outages scattered all across the Twin Cities tonight, and NSP does not expect to have everything restored, at least before Sunday. At this hour, about 6,800 customers remain without power. At the peak of the storm, though, that figure stood at 84,000. The storm also brought the Twin Cities International Airport to a standstill last night. Passengers were stranded and simply opted for some sleep once the airport shut down around 8.30. It reopened at 4 o'clock this morning, and it took most of the day to get all of the flight schedules back to normal. There is some happy news to come out of all of this. Two storm babies, born fine and healthy. Both are resting comfortably at Fairview Southdale Hospital. Both mothers had to be rescued by emergency crews from their stranded cars on 494. Hi, I over here were just super, and they were very concerned at first asking what number child this was, and when we told them it was number one, they said, oh, thank heavens, we've got plenty of time. <laughs> no problem, and in fact, there was plenty of time. Everything worked out great. Karen Gilbertson named her baby Joseph Clark. Barbara Taylor named her new boy David. By the way, she was stranded in waist-high water. She had to be floated out to the ambulance. One of those babies won't need any swimming lessons. Will no. They?